shall lift our hands to heaven, magnify the King of all kings, glorify his name forever, give him praise and glory, exalt him because no one is like him, forever is on the throne, blessed be your name, and Jesus most wonderful name. What you don't expect, God will never give you. And anything you don't pursue, you can never get. It is what your heart pants for that you go for. I was operating in power in Bible school. I saw the lame walk from Bible school, but I was not seeing prosperity. So I told my wife, I said, you know what? If I preach and the sick get healed and I'm poor, they will not respect the gospel. I said, now we are married, let me find the secret of kingdom wealth. And I shot myself for seven days with two books, but majored on one book. I was not fasting for poverty to live, I was fasting for light. I was not fasting that I should come out of. I was fasting, Lord, give me a revelation. And as a married man, all that we had at home, 1997 was 15 era. So don't tell me your case is the worst. I want to steer you up. And light came. And I turned to my wife and I said, we'll never be poor. 15 era. I'm sure nobody here has that kind of condition. I put my hand in my pocket and I said, listen, sweetheart, we can never be poor. That was the last day I had anything to do with poverty. Let the economy of the world tumble. Let the whole church say they will not give me an offering. I won't be poor. I have so much light on prosperity. So I'm not coming here to preach theory. I want to impact what I practiced. I'm not going to tell you stories tonight. I'm not going to tell you stories tomorrow. There are things I have practiced and it's working. Are you here? When you meet a practitioner, there's no point. Just follow whatever he has done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I know this two days meeting will move someone to a new level. Before we have our seats, I want to give all the glory to God for this privilege to be here. Pastor and his dear wife, their wonderful host. They know how to keep you coming. God bless you. There are places they invite me, I won't go. Even if they want to give me the whole world. There are places they invite you. You don't ask questions, they say, well, don't worry, I'll come. It is more of connectivity. It is not what they give to you, but the heart with which you will receive you. Now, before you have your seats, I will show you something that will break you out of your cocoons. Just before you sit down, I will show you three scriptures before you sit. Two for me, one for you, for the woman. When I would have left Nigeria, I would have left the country where I am to another country, the way things are tough. Look at this scripture. Acts 10, 34, 35. Before you sit down. Acts 10, 34, 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive. God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, including your nation, including what? The nation where you are. Whether you're in Ghana, you're in Mexico, you're anywhere, including your nation. He that feared him and walked in righteousness accepted with him. In every nation, including your nation. Romans 10, 12. Before I start preaching. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. No difference between the American and the Nigerian. For the same law. Over all, reach to all that call upon him. No difference between you and the American. 
No difference between American and the Ghanaian. Whoever calls upon him can make it. And now to the women. <laughs> I wish I was a man. Galatians 3 to the 8. Before I start preaching. So that you break all the nonsense in your head. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither born nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. So whether you're a man or woman, you can be rich. I, I wish I was a man and I would have believed it's a lie. It's not the Bible. The Bible says whether you're male or female. Does that break every nonsense in your head? Does that remove every nonsense in your head? And I hear this truth. You have, I've not said it, you know. <laughs> Well, uh, I think you should pray for me to be rich. That's the biggest mistake you have made. They don't pray to be rich. Jesus gave a formula, and then I will allow you to see it. In Matthew 11, 4 to 6. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do here and see. Look at verse 5. The blind, you see what? What does a blind man need? What does a blind man need? The lepers. Are cleansed. What does the leper need? Cleansing. And the deaf here, what does the deaf man need? The dead are raised. If you are praying for a dead man, what do you expect? Now read the next one. It didn't say the poor was prayed for. They must hear the gospel. And he knows everything. So verse 6 he said, and blessed is he. Because when it comes to this topic, people get angry. They say, why is he, why is he talking like this? Jesus said, hey, hey, hey. When it comes to this topic, oh, when you hear it, you get angry. But only those who are not angry will be blessed. Are you okay now? Can we take a full ride now? Father, speak to us to your word. So I refuse to be angry. With the truth, I will accept it raw and swallow it as it is. In Jesus' name. Father, speak to us through your word and teach us yourself. Let this today's meeting be an explosive one. In Jesus, you may be seated. Give me a big hand. Welcome everyone to this Financial Dominion Conference. Tomorrow morning will be explosive. Don't miss it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And don't miss it in the evening session. Financial what? Dominion. I'll be teaching, then I'll give you the topic. I won't give you the topic from now. While I'm teaching, then I'll not be sure the topic. <laughs> the kingdom of God has no poverty. Has no what? There's no poverty in the kingdom of God. <laughs> it's a kingdom that flows with endless wealth. Even the city and streets are paved with pure gold in heaven. In Revelation 21, 18, the B path unto the one B, it said the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. glass. The city was a what? So if you don't like jewelry, you don't go to heaven. Because the city of heaven is with gold. And so I wonder those who say they don't like wearing gold, they won't go to heaven. Because his own city is with what? If God is a sin, why will he pave it with gold? <laughs> Am I the writer of the Bible? He says his streets of heaven are what? So if gold is a sin, then God will not use it to pave his streets. Anybody who tells that where gold is a sin has a problem. Because heaven where we are all going to is with gold. In fact, not wearing gold may look like a goat. <laughs> the streets of, he said, in verse 21 b the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. God decked the streets of heaven what? Gold. As it was transparent glass. So when, you're, when you go to heaven, you'll be moving on gold. Are you expected to go there? <laughs> Before you go there, use the gold here. <laughs> and we are citizens of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is so wealthy that even the earth partakes of it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 26, for the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. So if God is not poor and his kingdom is not a poor kingdom, therefore you and I are not poor. God wants his heavenly kingdom 
to be reflective on the earth. That's why you and I are here. Now hear this again well. The purpose of God was to have the earth filled with his colony. And we are his colony. And as his colony, it is a spirit that will reflect the content, which is the wealth, on one that he has colonized. Now, if you watch any country that colonizes a nation, they have a reflection of that country. Britain, for instance, colonized Nigeria. Our forefathers never wore suit, but not everybody wears suit. That is the culture of the British man. Every British colony you see, the first thing you notice, they wear suit. Your forefathers never knew anything like suit. But it was a reflection of the colonized, the masters who colonized us. So there should be a reflection of what heaven has on us on the earth. Because we are his colony. Is that clear, sir? Glory to God. And wealth in the kingdom is supposed to be a reflection of what heaven, because heaven is so wealthy that the streets are paved with gold. That's why Solomon built a temple. He built everywhere with gold. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> but wealth in the kingdom is the property of God. Is the property of who? He said the art is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So we are given the world to accomplish his purpose on the earth. It's a true prosperity as the kingdom spread abroad. Our God is not poor. Then why are some of his children poor? That's where I'm going. <laughs> if our God is not poor, then why are some of his children poor? If your father is that rich, why then are you in poverty? Every child born to the royal family in Britain, they live big. You can't you see them use the black cab. They use other Range Rover, Rolls Royce, Bentley, the British cars. You will never see them use a black cab, which the common man uses as tax in Britain. Then why is there so much poverty in the body of Christ? And our father is so rich. <laughs> because we have ignored the passcode to kingdom wealth. Until you utilize the passcode, you cannot assess your inheritance. It is the legal principle that must be obeyed. Every nation, every kingdom has its legal principles under which your praise, including heaven. If you go to Britain, they have their legal principles. The steering is on the right, then you drive on the left. If you carry Nigerian principle to Britain, you have head leg collusion with a car. Nigeria is the opposite. The sign is on the left, you drive on the right. That is their own code. So everywhere has its own legal worth. Code. Heaven also has its own code and laws. Hear me and hear me well. This principle can be termed as keys because they, are, they give you access to the content of the nation or kingdom. God's kingdom has several keys with which you operate. In Matthew 16 and verse 19, he said, and I give, and I will give unto you, look at that word, keys, plural. Matthew 19, 16, 19, sorry, 16, 19. I will give unto you, the what? There's a plural, keys, not key. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys. Keys, plural. Why did Jesus say keys? And here we say prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Have you heard that kind of song before? Very wrong song. Prayer is the it's not the master key, please. Prayer is only one of the keys. The master key is the word of God. Hear this. The key to healing and health is different from the key to wealth. I can fast now and come and tell a sick person, sickness, leave this person. That key is different. If I fast and see a poor man, I say, poor man, leave him. It will not leave him. 
Jesus said, I pray for the blind to receive their sight. I pray for the lame to walk. He's the master who spoke. I pray for the dead to raise. But when it comes to the poor, I preach the gospel. The key for poverty is not prayer. You must hear the gospel. He said, in case you think that I will have to pray for you, do I pray for the sick? It will not work. Poor, you hear the gospel. And we don't like hearing the gospel. Even when they come for counseling, they say, pray for me, pastor. Pray, this is not working. Pray, pray, pray. And pastors with ignorance will keep praying. And you are praying for five years, this is not working. The wife must say, doing the same thing, same way, I spend the and the for insanity. You have been praying for your members for five years and they are not, poverty is not living there. Won't you change your style? Yes, sir. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. I operate in healing ministry. You operate in healing ministry. So if I'm telling you prosperity, you should believe. You won't say, okay, he doesn't understand what he's talking. I operate in the two. So I will tell you the two. If you take the principle of healing for prosperity, you will die early. <laughs> I've not seen most deliverance ministers, the poverty even is on them. Because they are trying to use the wrong key. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm? Prayer and fasting cannot be used as a key to open the door of kingdom wealth. Using the wrong key will amount to wasted effort. No matter how sincere you are, <laughs> If you are with the wrong key, you cannot open the door before you. Are you getting me now? Yes, you are sincere. You are very holy. And you carry the wrong key to your door. Will you open it? He said, Father, look at me now. Don't commit sin. God said, you key you're holding is not the correct key. That's how some Christians have died stupidly. God, I don't commit sin. I come so holy. Everything I do, God said, the key you're holding to your door is wrong. Go and look for the right key. Now hear this, and hear me well. Heaven is God's domain, which is his kingdom. And God is the king of heaven. He says the king of all the earth. The wealth of heaven belongs to him. We are not the owners, we are just managers. Understand that. We are to take proper care of what he owns. When he created men in Genesis chapter 1, he said, God, Adam, Take care of this garden. I'm the owner, but you take care of it. He said, he took man and placed him there and said, have what? Dominion. But he didn't say you are the owner. If Adam was the owner, he wouldn't have driven him out when he mismanaged it. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> when Adam mismanaged it, you know, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, Genesis chapter 3, 22, 23 to 24, he sacked him. He said, you are sacked. I gave you an employment and you mismanaged, be sacked. Wealth is so precious to God that he sent angels to guard his property. When he sacked him, he said, now, angels, watch over my property. I don't want this man to misbehave again. So the earth is an extension of his own worth, domain. Psalm 47 verse 7. By redemption, you and I have been given back the earth to manage. Redemption has brought us back. What Adam lost, he has given us to what? Manage. Now, managing God's resources demand strict adherence to Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. So the kingdom of God is the source and all these things are the resources. So we are not to chase after the sources. We are to go after the source, which is the kingdom of God. Is that clear, sir? Many are chasing after money. God said, no. Don't chase after money. Chase after my kingdom. And then I will just give these things to you. Now listen, let me explain it to you deeper. As long as Adam was faithful in the garden, he didn't look for food to eat. He didn't look for clothes to wear. He didn't look for any provision. Everything was available until he mismanaged it. So God said, listen, Jesus came back and gave us the same principle in Genesis chapter, in Matthew chapter 6. It was, God, Jesus was only referring to what Adam lost in Genesis Matthew chapter 6. He said, look, take no thought what you shall eat because Adam did not think of that. Take no thought what you wear. Adam never thought of that. 
Don't bother yourself. Just seek my kingdom, what Adam lost. And all these things, like what Adam did not think, I will be the one to provide them for you. There was no way Adam prayed for clothes. He clothed him. There was no way Adam prayed for food. He gave him food. He said, now, in this time, turn your focus. The world will run after those things, but put my kingdom first. And I will clothe you, I will cover you the way I covered Adam. And what the world is looking for will just come to you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And someone in this meeting, your days of long prayers for wealth will be cancelled. Without praying, it will be coming. Amen. I'm standing before God. 1997 to date, I've never prayed for money. Not even in secret. Listen, prayer is even from commanding things to happen. I've never prayed, oh God, I need money. Our church has never prayed. We have commanded things to come home. I'll tell you that one. We have commanded, well, find your place here. Prayer is even from commanding. Commanding that you know it's your right. He said, follow me. <laughs> but to see that, say, oh God, I need five million for what? Before I open my mouth, it's there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Hear this, hear this. Until you understand this, you will remain afloat. If you don't understand. And God's kingdom is understanding that produces outstanding results. Now, yeah, this one day, Topia Eunuch was studying and he said, he met Philip. And Philip said, understand it what thou readest. In Acts chapter 8, 26 to 40. So, he said, give me understanding. Psalm 19 verse 34. And I shall keep the law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Give me what? May God give you understanding. Many don't have understanding of the principles of kingdom wealth. There's no challenge without an answer. First Corinthians 13, verse 10, verse 13. There's nothing you're going through now as hardship that God doesn't have an answer to. He said, Well, there had no temptation taking you, but it's such as what? Come on to my in case you're looking for 10 million to pay rent, he says, Come on. But God is said, who will not suffer you to be tempted above all that you are able? But we talk to you make also a way of what? Escape. So there's nothing you're going through now as hardship that God said doesn't have an answer to. You just have to find a way to do it. Are you getting me? And God will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. And God's word is the most authentic way to every answer of life's challenge. When you understand God's word, believe God's word, act on his word, you become a commander on the earth. Faith in God's word commands your authority over any challenge. Situations will bow to you at the instance of a wavering faith. If that can believe this word, all things are what? To him that believes the word. Anytime you receive God's word in faith, it empowers you to become what you have received. As many as received it today, give what? So if I receive, the part of the gospel has not benefited you is the part you have not understood. The day you understand this word in any path, it will benefit you. If you are not getting results anywhere, it's the area you have not what? Understood. Is that clear? Now hear me. <laughs> God's word is God's instruction. This Bible is full of instructions. Full of what? And when you follow the instructions, you draw a distinction. Now, how many of you really want not this one hand to mouth wealth? I don't mean hand to what? Hand to mouth is common. But where you want to break the back of poverty for life. How many want that kind of grace? Jesus, for instance, they wanted wine. He said, put water. Because wine is a liquid. It has to be liquid to liquid. They wanted bread. He said, bring bread. Solid to solid. But there must be a point of contact. He said, what do you want? Put water. I have the ability. It is a put stone. Because wine has to be liquid for him to turn it to wine. He said, put water. They just obeyed. They didn't ask too many questions. They obeyed. And they turned it to wine. Now, if you want to... Uh, pay tight is one. Let me explain to you. When you pay tight, it's like coming to... If you've ever been to any major palace, I've been privileged to go to top government offices in Nigeria and outside the country. They will first of all open gate for you. But that doesn't mean you have entered. 
Security will check you, screen you. They even say, drop your phone. When you drop your phone, they say, come in. You enter another place, they scan you again. Before the president will see you, you go through two or three security checks. Tight is the first gate. You have not gained access. You, you have been able to enter the compound of Asorok. You're in White House, but you have not entered the house. Are you getting what I'm saying? But that's one thing you would, you would do as a child of God. As you're coming, they will open from the beginning. My wife and I went to Maryland to dedicate the state house. Before we came in, they knew we were coming. So there was, from the gate to the man, the doors were open. So there was nothing stop here to check because they already know we are coming. There was direct access to the governor because they knew we are coming. That kind of access is different from when you enter gate. They say, yes, are you on appointment? You, you explain. You go again, they say, drop your phone. This one, nothing like, drop, they just say, it's expecting them. Do you understand the difference? I'm going to tell you what it, it takes to Turn the key on to gain direct access to kingdom without any hindrance. It is stronger than any other kind of giving. Normal giving can't give you that access. Your tithe can't give you that access. You must pay title because prosperity, without tithe, you, you are not serious. That's the foundation of prosperity. So you don't do this one without tithe. Tithe must be first. I want to lay this because people have been paying tight and they're not seeing. You know why I'm teaching this? I have paid tight and I was not seeing wealth coming. I give offering and I said, God, what is this? And I said, God, there must be something. And God began to take me to a deeper level. So I'm going to teach, talk on the power of sacrifice. Power of what? Understanding, I put the word understanding the power of sacrifice. That's the message. Understand the what? Understand it. Don't just say sacrifice. Understand it because you can give sacrifice without understanding. Understanding the power of what? Sacrifice. Understanding the power of sacrifice. What is sacrifice? So you don't think that it's to kill good. Because worry. I see all manner of programs. I know be good head. <laughs> The kind of programs I see, Warren, I don't think I've seen them anywhere in the world. I'm not the Christmas good. <laughs> I say, Warren, Warren, if me your titles, worry people. <laughs> My blood is not for Christmas. <laughs> I say, Warren, I like her now. Two to your blood, don't be for Christmas. <laughs> Maybe I'll give one title when I come to Warren next time. You know, Warren has, the titles of Warren are different from everywhere in the world. My blood is not for Christmas. <laughs> I like Oreo. Your English is different. Your word of life is different. You, you, you close early by 6 o'clock. Everybody's running home. I see they're pushing them. <laughs> by 7, everywhere is get, 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 get. <laughs> Amen. Say, now we own. How far? <laughs> it's say, others say, now we're all. You say, now we own. <laughs> I said, you agree. Say, how far? Your English is different. It's only one way somebody's trekking. They say this one way. That's for a man trek, you know. They say, what I do here? Now, one way be this, so. <laughs> they say, what way for motor? They say, you must be too, now, one way. <laughs> hey, well, yeah. It's a country in a country. <laughs> I love what you. <laughs> God bless what in Jesus' name. <laughs> the gospel must move here. What is Sacrifice. In case you're watching from any part of the world, what is where we are transmitting from? Where you don't worry about anything. <laughs> what is a sacrifice? Now, a sacrifice is a seed carrying precious cost laid on the altar of God for a desired turnaround. Now, hear this truth. In life, you don't wait for things to change. You provoke change in order to take charge. I repeat, in life, you don't wait for what? Things to change. You can provoke the change you desire. Changes don't just happen. They are made to happen. 
Nothing turns captivity like sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving is what will provoke beneficial results. Let me say this to you. I was in Bible school. I will never forget 1996. And Bishop Oedipo, my father, my mentor, we are having what we used to call breakthrough seminar. And he said, we want to buy the aircraft for the African Gospel Invasion Program to go around Africa. Because that time, if for you to enter flight to African nations, it will be sometimes in a week, maybe one flight to a country. So it means if you, you want to go again, the following week again. So he said, there's no way you can do that kind of thing. So we all are, said that we have to get an aircraft because if you go to some nation in Africa, some of them, two weeks before the flight will come back. So you can imagine you stay on two weeks just to preach one day. And as a student, I did not have cash, but I had electronics. Listen. And I said, Lord, I will must be a partaker of this grace. <sighs> My classmates, most of the way, are grumbling. Why would you do? Now, can you have to go by? What do you know if you buy? You know if you buy, you know, go preach. Look at them. I said, the aircraft is for him or for gospel. Someone sat with me, I was grumbling. It's forty today. And I went in and I carried my electronics. Well, that was the best thing I had. I carried all my electronics and I went to the gate. As I was dropping the electronics, I heard, you will never beg a ministry. I turned. And believe me, I've never begged a ministry. In 1996, then I said, Pastor, 1999, we are trying to build the church because it's better you tell your story. So don't think that I just jumped to be here. Because some people think that you just got here by a magic. And the first money I ever heard as a pastor in my life, first block money I heard, was 723000 I will never forget. I had no car. I had no wealth. I had no car. Then Vibu that time was five hundred thousand. Padded Vibu, Tokumo. They used one, clean one. But they were to extend the church to build it. So I asked for the amount. They said seven hundred thousand. I said, well, I'm going to give seven hundred thousand of what the money was in my hand. I kept only twenty three thousand to buy books. I gave seven hundred thousand for the extension of the church. Bought books twenty three thousand. Heavens open. Will I be talking about cars? Pastor Keke has given me a car in a year. One particular year, every month, was giving me a car for 12 cars for one year. I have given 50-something cars in less than two months as gift. That's, I had cars to a point there was no space in my compound. People gave me cars from Christ Embassy. People gave me cars from Anglican Church. People gave me cars from Redeem. Cars were so much that I said, what am I doing here with these cars? I'm not opening a car shop. I got to there, I got to the gate, I saw the gate, gatekeeper, I said, come, do you know how to drive? He said, yes, I said, carry this out, the, drive it out. And I said, do you know how to drive? Come and carry this Passat, drive it out. I said, change the particulars after. One day, I was standing and I saw almost four of them standing by my side, they were the cars I gave to them. I've given from Lexus Jeep to G-Wagon, Range Rovers, not Range Rovers, Range Rovers, Mercedes, Mercedes Benz of any kind I've given out. There's no class of car I've not given. Maybe the next one I'll give next Rolls Royce. Any other car you can think of I've given out. Not bad cars or clean cars. But I made a sacrifice where I was supposed to buy a car. Whatever you make happen for the kingdom, you have it in essence. Now listen again. Because I'm telling you, so you don't think I got here. In 2012, I was in America and I just told God, I love you. I want to give one million dollars. I know you had that testimony and some of you are tired. You keep hearing it. After we have been hearing of what Solomon gave. I would did you tell from my Bible? I'm sure what I gave is what I want Solomon gave because he had more money than what I had that time. He didn't give what I gave. My sacrifice, when we get to heaven, if it has if Solomon is in heaven, I doubt. <laughs> but when we get to heaven, 
wherever he is, I'll tell him, Solomon, if he's on that side, I'll say, Solomon, you, you didn't come here because of one or two things. But me, I'm here. <laughs> that one, only God will decide that. But I, I was just talking, and I had no house, not even a block. I had no plot of land, 2012. Not 2002, 2012, not too far. And you get what I'm saying now? Ten years ago. And I told God I want to give one million dollars. And God will always try you. And I had one million dollars. My wife is sitting here. I didn't tell her. Because when Abraham gave Isaac, he didn't discuss with her. Sarah. <laughs> she will not stop me. She's a giver. I took the money on a Sunday, dropped it as an offering. The only person who knew was the accountant. She was privileged because of her office to see. She shouted. She said, what is this? I said, shh. That is 560 or 70, 60 something million naira today. And one Sunday, I'm not talking about houses. I have all manner of plots of land all over the world that I can't. One day I said I cannot use two plots. They carry it on social media. And they are not wrong. There's no way I can live with two plots. They should also carry that I gave offering when I had no plot. They didn't carry that part. They only carry that David Biomir said he cannot live in two plots. They should also carry that David Biomir gave when he had no plot. You know, they would just carry the story from one side, eliminate the reality. They would have said David Biomia gave one million dollars when he had no plot. So now he said he cannot live in two plots because when he gave, he had no plot. The only carry that David Biomia said cannot live in two plots. Yes, I can't live in two plots because I gave when I never had plots. Are you hearing me now? The harvest I'm enjoying is overwhelming. God is not selfish. It's not a man that he should lie. Number 23, 19, my best scripture. When you do your part, you provoke him to do his part. Sacrificial giving is what makes prosperity to come alive and takes its course in your favor. Nothing moves God to change a man's situation like sacrificial giving. It is your divine access to kingdom wealth. It's your what? To kingdom wealth. And I'll give you scriptural examples of those who Effected change through sacrifice. How many want change? You want to change your situation? You want to change your life? I'll tell you scriptural examples of those who effected what? Change through they were able to turn their lives around through sacrifice, including me. Number one is Noah. Is who? God placed a curse on man in Genesis chapter three. In chapter eight, twenty to twenty-two, Noah reared an altar. And the moment he did that, God said, <laughs> no more will I curse man again anymore. From today, as long as this age minutes, see time and harvest shall not cease. He broke the curse placed on man with a sacrifice. Today, somebody's curse in your lineage, your family curse will be broken. Amen. By the sacrifice you give, your own sisters, brothers will be delivered from it. Amen. God was, the curse was lifted on the altar of what? Sacrifice. The next one was Abraham. In Genesis 22, 10 to 18, God himself will say, swear not swore. He said, not to swear to because I'm almighty. By myself, have I sworn. Abraham, you have done something which no man has done. Abraham gave Isaac. I said, by myself, have I sworn. That in blessing, I will bless thee. You will be so blessed that. And Israel is still enjoying the blessing of what? Well, he said, he blessed, Abraham blesses a mind. When you sing that song, say, Abraham sacrificial giving is also mine. Don't sing the song. Do what Abraham did. When you sing, say, Abraham sacrificial giving is mine. I will bless in the morning. I will bless anytime. And when I do what Abraham did, <laughs> compose it the way you like. But don't sing it until you do what Abraham did. God sworn when Abraham provoked him on the altar of what? Sacrifice. May God swear concerning you. Amen. If you read 16 to 18, he said, by myself have I sworn. If God swear concerning you, will any devil touch you? There are some of us who God has sworn, no? All the demons can't touch us. Now, let me say this to you. Take this tape to the, to the, to the witches' council headquarters. I won't pray, I won't be poor. Take the tape. Say, this man to talk. He said, which is, even if you hold anything against him, he will never be poor. I will not fast. I won't pray. I won't be poor. You're a woman. 
Do you need prayer? Yeah, man. Pastor, yeah, man. If someone now comes to a woman, do you need prayer? He's a man. There's a way you give with understanding, which is can't turn it. All those which are holding your finances is a lie. It's ignorance. No witch can hold your finance. It's a lie. It's ignorance. It's what? Okay, if witches can hold the finance, why do witches not turn the day tonight? <laughs> God said, as long as you see the day and night as changing their position, relax, my covenant cannot be broken. So, that all these witches are tired of finance. Both the man doing the deliverance for you and you are ignorant. All those are nonsense gimmicks to hold people down. No witch can hold your finance down. Relax, my friend. Just do what God said you should. And another person who did that is David. Is who? David, the second Samuel chapter 24, 24, 25. David, that was a plague in Israel. By mistake, but was made. And David said, I will not give that which cost me nothing. The plague stopped. Today, someone's plague will stop in the name of Jesus. Listen, you can stop a plague with sacrifice. You can stop a plague with what? I'll tell you a testimony. Our son at the time had an attack that was, was not funny. It was gasping for bread. Death came face to face. I'm an anointed man of God without humility. Death came face to face. I, I prayed, I prayed. I said, no, this is not normal. And I said, Satan, I know one tool you can't ever handle. On the spot, at that time, I gave 50 million. My wife gave all her foreign currency, all. <laughs> plague stopped. Don't tell me, you, are, you know, I've been praying. There are things you don't handle with prayer. You handle with seed. The way we laid that sacrifice, that was the way out. Death just took his hands off him. Any plague chasing you will drop off today. Amen. Another man would turn this captivity is Solomon. Is who? Give me Solomon. How many of you always pray for God to give you money? Have you ever prayed for God to give you the truth in your closest? I prayed before I knew the truth. So to tell you don't pray, you're telling a lie. Me, I prayed. Until I knew the truth. I prayed. So don't tell me don't pray. You pray me yet. Today say you prayed. <laughs> <laughs> now, in First Kings 3, 3 to 4, let me show you something. And Solomon loved the Lord. Three to four. Three first. Three, verse three. Three, three. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walk in the statue of David, his father. Only he sacrificed. Only he what? And born incense in high places. Verse four. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was a great high place. A thousand pound offerings. And Solomon offered upon that. He offered one thousand pound offerings. And in verse 13 of that same scripture, he said, And I have given thee that which does not ask. Did you hear that? It was only sacrifice he made. God, don't ask. But what? He didn't ask for money. God said, I'm giving you. So, wealth is charger. All you need to do is to buy phone. Do you pray for charger? Do you pray for charger? Do you pay for charger? Once you buy a phone, it's an accessory. Wealth in the kingdom is an accessory. Pursue the phone. Charger will be accompanying it. Solomon just made sacrifice. He knew the secret. He said, now I'm going to give sacrifice. And God said, I will add wealth that you did not ask for. May God give it to you. Amen. He had financial dominion by knowing the access to wealth. Which is sacrificial giving. Sacrificial what? Solomon provoked God to lavish him with the wealth. And he said, greater than Solomon what? Is here. And you are greater than Solomon. So what God will give to you after this understanding will shake your nations. Amen. Will shake nations. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. If you look at the Philippian church in Philippians chapter 4, 15 to 19, we almost quote, there's a scripture we always quote, God shall supply. If you quote Philippians 4, 19 without 8, 15 to 18, you are a 4, 1, 9. It is 15 to 18 that provoke verse 19. When you give sacrificially once and again, then 19 just takes place. Then many of us always talk about God. God. Let me tell everybody who has religious mentality. God Almighty, can you do all things? 
Can God do all things? Can God do all things? But God had to give sacrifice before he could break the hands of the devil. The Almighty God. To tell he cannot break scriptures. Is it that I want to break scriptures? Let's do it together. For God so loved the world that he did what? He prayed. He fasted. He cast out the devil. It's only only that was a sacrifice. No sons then. One son he had. He laid him as a sacrifice because Satan arrested all of us. And he knew he cannot break backbone of that hand of Satan without obeying scriptures. So God himself had to obey scriptures by laying a seed. What did he give? Man? What did he get? Human? Well, listen, every seed produced after his kind. What did God give? A, a son. What did he get? What do you want? Money? Is it money you want? You give money. He lost humanity to the devil. So he had to give his best. He didn't give it to Michael. Sacrifice is giving your best. Sacrifice what? You don't give trash. If he says sorry, the sacrifice means you are giving your best. And that is where God will turn your captivity. And somebody's captivity will turn today. Amen. Shout amen if you believe that. Amen. Shout a loud amen if you believe that. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? God gave his best to get us back. Now, Jesus himself gave himself as a sacrifice. Gave himself as a... So you can see the way it moves. John 10, 17 and 18. He said, I have power to lay it. I have power to take it. This command is from my father. He laid down himself. Are you getting me? Nothing turns captivity like Savior giving. A sacrifice always plays a pressure cause on the man who is making it. And I hear what God said in Psalm 126, 5 and 6. It says... When the Lord turn again our captivity, we are like them that dream. Do you want your captivity to turn? He said, when, not if. When the Lord, Psalm 1, 2, 6, 5, and 6. When the Lord turn again our captivity, we are like them that dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. They that so in tears. You know the meaning? See what it means. Tears don't connote physical crying. You don't have. But that which you have now, you are carrying that thing that is so precious to you to give to God. It's a tearful seed. God had no other child. He had only one. He too made a tearful seed. He gave him. He said, well, you carry what? I had no other electronics. I gave the only electronics I had. Are you getting me now? I had no money, no car. I gave all that I had to. You, you are, inside you, you are weeping. Inside you are what? He said, you shall doubtless. It's time to tell you. Shall, look at it. Doubtless come again so you will return. He that goeth for weeping. Bear, so if the seed is not precious, it is not a sacrifice. Shall darkness come again with rejoicing? Bring Jesus. That means the harvest is sure. No devil can stop it. This is a sure harvest. When you lay that kind of seed, heaven must respond. That is where every Christian must turn his captivity from. No man give you can't turn your captivity. No way. No way. No more offering can't tell you. must be a sacrificial seed before you break the backbone of poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying? All we had at home was 50, 000, 50 naira. That was where I broke the backbone of poverty. 50 naira. So it's not the amount. It's the pre that, as a married man, all we had at home, 1997, was 50 naira. But I dropped the 50 naira as a seed. So it's not the amount. Too. It's the, how the value of it. Are you getting me? That today, if I give one million, it's not a sacrifice. God will flog me. One million, it will flog me. That's not a sacrifice. But as somebody will give ten naira now, it will be a sacrifice to the person. So it is, are you getting what I'm saying? It is, depends on how precious that seed is to the person. Somebody's ten naira may be a sacrifice. Somebody's ten million may not be a sacrifice. Are you getting the difference? Now let me say this to you. God is not in need. Neither is he an opportunity. Neither is he an opportunist. He meets the needs of people. He gives opportunity to transform the destinies of men. The church of Jesus is not in need. All we are teaching is that this is the secret that can make you come out of lifetime poverty. A sacrifice is the covenant master key to economic empowerment and unlimited breakthroughs. Now listen. How come the church was in charge of the financial world before now? How are they not in charge? 
Check Rock, John D. Rockefeller, who was the richest man in his time. He gave at the time, he sacrificed. They told him he would die of terminal cancer. Have you ever heard the story before? Before 50, you would die. Before, 50, before you get to 50, you would die. He got to live 90 something years. He gave 50% of his income. Heaven responded, removed the plague, and he lived. That a terminal cancer has no cure. Do, do you know what your all this stinginess? You don't know what you do to your life. So prosperity, the kingdom answers to covenant opportunity. Who benefits from sacrifice? Who benefits from what? <laughs> of course, you and I, not God. Does God need your money? Does God need your money? Does He eat money? Who, okay, when Solomon gave, who benefited? It's not God. Every altar of sacrifice culminates in the recovery of people's destiny. And sacrifice is not once and for all. It's a practice as often as you want to change in your life. Prosperity, economic recovery, dignity answers to practice of the covenant. Every time you turn around, just lay down what? A sacrifice. It has the capacity to catapult you into the realm of kingdom wealth. The power to get wealth in the hands of God. Who is the hands of who? Look at it. When Israel was coming out of Egypt, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, Deuteronomy chapter 8, he said, hey, remember, the world you came from Egypt, I gave you. Don't you get it to your head to think it's your wealth. I gave it to you. I said, I am here that give anyone power to get wealth. So any day you think it's your own, I'll take it from you. And no, and I'll work with you. Anytime I need it, bring it. I will empower you for more wealth. And when Israel did not use it, he took it from them. Are you getting me now? And the reason for wealth is to accomplish his purpose on the earth. Because if you don't know the reason, you may abuse it. Wealth belongs to him, so you must first use it to advance his kingdom. Zechariah 117. Get this understanding right. Now, if wealth is your, let me tell you something I will buff for you. Jesus gave a parable in Matthew when he gets home, read 25, 14 to, 20, 14 to 30. A parable of the talents. You remember? 5, 2, 1. When he came back, did he ask them? When he gave them talents, five talents, two talents, one talent, did he ask them back? One was able to trade as I made more five talents. What means, why did he ask them? Because they were to give account to him. So whatever he puts in your hand, you have to give account back. I come again. <laughs> Every time money is in your hand, just know that God will ask you a question. That the money I gave to you, account for it. You know our problem? We think it's our own. That's why we miss it. In Romans 14, 12, so, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So when God gives you, we say, the ten that I give you, I gave you, what did you do with the ten that I? Give account back. That one that I put in your hand, what did you do with it? Give account back. And if you don't give proper account of it, that's where poverty starts. Now, I'm going somewhere because I'm laying this foundation. KK wanted me to cook on what I did glory rain to advance, but tomorrow I'm going to a different diamond. Tomorrow you like it. A seed will always meet a need. It's not only money. A centurion gave a seed of building a synagogue. He made the need of a servant being healed. I'll tell you a secret. Seed is powerful. The woman poured alabaster oil on his feet. She got a, a need was met of salvation. Peter gave a seed of boat. He got his need met by catching more fishes. Every need can be met with a seed tomorrow. You can take a seed to provoke anything. She gave to Elisha. By the time she came back, she had a son. With a seed. Seed can meet any need. Tomorrow, deep teaching in the morning, different from this one. I blame this foundation because if you don't do this one, you'll be struggling. You'll be str if you, this one, if you don't understand this one, struggle, you keep struggling. You get money today, you'll be broke tomorrow. You get money today, you'll be broke tomorrow. But if you want continuously just the thing to be coming, this is the secret. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But let me say this to you King Solomon, the wealthiest man in Bible history. 
there was problem he had. Solomon knew the purpose of kingdom wealth. Sorry, Solomon knew the access to kingdom wealth, but did not know the purpose of kingdom wealth. Solomon knew what? He knew that giving can make him rich, but he did not know the purpose of wealth. So he abused it. So what? He abused it. And if purpose is not known, abuse is what? Inevitable. So before you get the wealth, you must know the purpose. Now, when, before Solomon was born, it was prophesied that he was going to be rich, so it was not new. That Solomon would be a very rich man, and he would build a temple. It, it, now, before you became born again, it has been done that you shall be a king and priest and shall reign upon the earth. Is that true? So you already ordained that you'll be rich. So poverty is it's an anatomy in the kingdom. Because it's greater than Solomon is here. So already before you became born again, God has already ordained that any born again child is supposed to be rich. But why are you not rich? Because you don't know the purpose. Now Solomon, God told him that he was going to be rich, so it's not a strength. He was going to be very rich. It was already ordained. And Solomon became so rich that the father said to him, like, you are going to build the, the, the temple. I'm not going to do it because God has told me, but I'll provide for you build. But something happened to Solomon. Solomon, when he got the money, built only one temple. Only what? One temple. But built 1,000 shrines. Because of his strange wives he had. In 1 Kings 11, 7 to 8, then the Solomon built a high place. The word high place is shrines. Is what? Shrines. And Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, he married in verse 8, and likewise did he for all his strange wives. Do you hear that? With burnt incense and sacrifice on their cause. In first things, chapter 11, verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princess, and 300 concubines, 1,000. That's a mad, mad man. 1,000. There's no way we know them. So when they are coming, I'm sure they will put in number tag. Number 723. So I say, which number are you? He said, 682. <laughs> he will, he will, they will put tag on their neck. He said, which number are you? One will say, well, my, the number is 500. It's okay. Because th th there's no way he will know them. Are you getting me? The wife turned his heart from God and made him to build shrines. And that number 11, three, the wife turned away his heart. Let me say this to you. If you don't use your wealth to build church, you will misuse it. The moment Solomon stopped building churches, he began to build something else. Nature has horse vacuum. Either you are sacrificing to promote the kingdom or you will go to the devil. No neutral ground. And hear this. Wealth can diminish if the purpose is abused. We need to understand the purpose of kingdom wealth. If you don't have this understanding, you will abuse it. You will do what? You will abuse it. What stops Solomon from building more churches? Are you hearing what I'm saying? My wife is here because I won't be sharing only my testimonies. My wife is well here. My wife, money, she builds churches. She has a special gift. She built churches single-handedly, not salvation ministries. Single-handedly. <laughs> she has two simultaneously she's building. Two simultaneously. She's building single-handedly. She'll just build, we'll go and dedicate. She built, my, I won't talk my own because there's no point where you say, well, God has blessed him. What of the wife? Our money goes for that. And I don't know how she gets the money. She, I will be laughing with her. I said, my wife, how does that you get money? You know why? You can't be poor promoting the kingdom. Now listen, this is what God does. When you promote his kingdom, he goes, now the moment Israel was out to promote his kingdom, he goes out taking the wealth of Egyptians to put to you. The reason why the church is poor is because we have missed the purpose. We have missed what? The first thing we are going for, Lord, I want to buy a car, give me money. Lord, I want to pay school fees, give me school fees. The moment you promote his kingdom, those things will bring them to you. That's a seek you first, the kingdom of God. 
First go build my house and watch it. Make sacrifice towards the building of my house. And see how I will not bring those things to you. I will take the wealth in the hands of the Egyptians and put it in your hands. But the church does not go for that. What we go for is for ourselves. So we miss it. All we are after. Oh God give me money to pay school fees. God give me money to pay house rent. They will come. But first the money you get promote his kingdom first. And then you will see him go all out to bring the money for what you need. I'm telling you what I practiced. I gave him 700,000. Then cars I need to buy and I have cars. Do you understand how it is? I gave him for what I was to use to start building a house. I have houses everywhere. I, do you understand how it is? Are you getting how it works? Now, let me explain to you. Our TV ministry has never been under pressure. If you watch me when I preach, I don't raise offering. Not that raising offering is wrong. Please, it's not wrong. Where did I get it from? I'll tell you a testimony. I'll shock you. When we had to start TV ministry, I said, God, what do I do? He so $10,000 into TBN. That time. $10,000 to us that time was, it's like we're sowing $10 billion today. He said, so $10,000. I took $10,000 and sowed it into TBN. You all know TBN. From that day, our TV ministry is like, we spend millions of dollars without feeling it. We don't take any special offering for TV. In dollars, $200,000, $300,000, $50,000, virtually all the Christian stations in America, you know we are in. Every day, we're on this star, we're on World Network, we're on God Channel. Name it, true? Okay. You think it's it? And the money is coming from Nigeria. Am I telling you a secret? You want to break the backbone of poverty? Any area you want God to do for you, sow into that area. In sacrifice. In what? Let me, I'm rounding off. No long grammar in evening service. To enjoy endless wealth, you must secure the hand of God upon your life by engaging in advancing his kingdom. In advancing what? His kingdom. It is kingdom advancement practitioners that become commanders of great wealth. Don't say you don't have from the level you are. From the level what? First money I gave was what? 59. From the level you are, start from that level and promote the kingdom. You'll be going like this. <laughs> No economy can stop you. Okay, let me share this with you. For men of God. Our landlord, 1999, told us to quit our property. Where well, we was using as rented place, so we should park. And we had one point something million in the account. Total money. Listen now. <laughs> And Lala said we should move out of the place. He doesn't want us to renew rent. He doesn't want us to do anything. The money in our hand was not enough to rent another place where we had the GRA portal got. And they were building faith tabernacle. Now listen, this is why it's happening. I am teaching what I practice. I understand it. In the natural, I should run to Edebo because he's my mentor. I said, Edebo, I pay tight here. I do everything here. What you need to help us is wrong. Very wrong. I know what to do to provoke the hand of God. So, I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, take 600,000, 100 and 500 in different locations. I don't want to just save time. He said, take that and sow, because you want property, sow into a faith tabernacle as they're building. That's what you want. I didn't mean to for faith. I didn't ask him to pray for me. You don't need to meet the man of God to pray. It's God you're dealing with. I took the money. As I dropped, landlord has given us two weeks to quit. As I dropped the offering, turned back, to Portaco, the woman walked to me. He said, sir, there's a property. So the property has been there. Until Abraham gave Isaac, he never saw the ram. Yeah. Your miracle is available, but you need a sacrifice to see it. Yeah. Sacrifice gives you revelation to your destiny. There are things now God will show you in the oil industry. 
you will never see them until you give sacrificially. The day you give, you say, turn! This is what you need. The Bible said the ram was held in a ticket. That means your miracle will be waiting for you when you give sacrificially. He brings it to you. The moment I gave that offering, I came by the woman and said, there's a property in Plus 70 where we're using now. Can the church have it? I she was in the church, though. She was in the church. And God knew we were going to buy it. That was the only property that was cheap in the whole of GRA. That government still had that has not been bought. He sees the end from the beginning. And said we should buy it. Now, see how the humble testimony. We paid 350 when we came for where we are. In any town in Nigeria, rent does not go down, it goes up. Nigeria rent does not go down. If you pay 15 at this time, be ready for 16. <laughs> now, well, when we got to plus 17, the rent came down. They said, Can we have it for 180,000? Listen, from 350 to what? God knew that we had made sacrificial offering. And he knew we'd buy it. And we bought it at a ridiculous amount. We bought the property later. And bought the next one. You don't know what you're missing. Being stingy. God does not need your money. You need his blessing. And the church, his church does not need your money. Okay. I'm only telling you what works so. So you don't do like this and your head begins to pain you. <laughs> When you touch the heart of God by investing into his kingdom here on earth, it secures your destiny and makes you a man of generational impact. There is no single person that takes delight in advancing God's kingdom that does not have a reward beyond measures. I am prospering because I derive joy in expanding the kingdom of God. Now, let me tell you that. During glory reign, I raised a sacrificial offering to tell you how powerful your heart is. When I wanted to raise the offering... I wanted to ask people to give, not a raise. I wanted people to give. Because I don't believe in somebody saying, preaching what you don't practice. So I was in the bedroom. He said, give this amount. It was specific on the amount he told me to give. Now when he told me the amount, the amount was not in my current account. But I know how it was. So I said, God, you know I will never hesitate to give you. Prove to me that this is what you want me to do. I will not chide with any mortal man the amount you are telling me. And I will give it. Now, as I two days to the day I preached the sacrifice, the money was not complete in my current account. But I will preach, I preach on the Thursday. By Wednesday morning, it's like on your marks. Get set. Go. 10 million. 3 million. 5 million. I was just in a lot. 7 million. 1 million. It was, bloop, bloop, bloop. It hit the figure. And progressed the figure. Because God knows I will pay tight. I smiled. And I gave it with joy. Gave it what? With joy. Well, my level has changed. Sacrifice is the easiest way to change your level. Change your what? Levels. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hmm? So think of how to build more churches. Think of how to what? Build more churches. And the master's place is building. Is that not true? They didn't tell me, oh, I'm the one who's preaching it. Now, I wanted property. So where did I sow to? Faith Tabernacle, property. I, I, I sold for a car. The one I was, I didn't have a car. Do I have cars now? <laughs> Anything you give for a purpose, you have a surplus. That's what God means. If now you have somebody who wants properties, just sow into the master's place cathedral as a sacrifice, then you do your own. Because it's not the owner of the church. Is this church? Is this house? Is this is it, is, it, is it where he's going to live? Is he going to live inside that place? Well, pa, is he living here now? Every church, you are not the owner. That's why we don't say my church. I do. If he's your owner, okay, get, carry your bed and I'll sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, when you make it happen, God will make it happen for you. It's a simple principle. But you can never break the backbone of poverty with tithing alone. You bring the backbone of poverty with sacrificial giving. With what? Something very precious. Something very what? And dear to you. That's where you break the backbone of poverty. At that point, you just shift. Titan is foundation for prosperity. Normal offering will be giving you small, small. But real breakthrough. Bam! Sacrificial giving. 
The what? That one, Satan can't hold you. All the demons in worry can't stop you. Politicians, look. If Christians will know who go into politics, gives are giving. All politicians, you beat them hands down. You know our problem? We apply the wrong keys. Pray, give. What did I say? Why you pray also give? <laughs> pray what? Pray, give. <laughs> As you are praying, you know, also what? My, my wife gives. I give. So two of us are prospering. If one person is giving, the only person, there are some families, only the husband is prospering, the wife is not prospering. Now if your husband is not giving you money, wife, you are not a giver. When you give, I let your husband be the most stingiest person he will give you. God will compel him. You know why most men don't give to you? You, the woman, don't give. He said, nobody's giving to me. You are not a giver. Nigeria is hard. You are hard. <laughs> so, the first thing is not just giving, is to promote his kingdom. To promote what? That is foundation. Tomorrow I'm going to tell you some deep things you have never heard. Too deep. To what? Too deep. Too deep. Are you hearing me? How many of you heard of Alabama property? They gave to us free. You heard it? That I won't tell you the story. It was provoked by sacrificial giving. 2015. I won't tell you the details. 2015, God told me to sow seed into three men of God, they're both 70, on behalf of the church. He said, on behalf of the church, sow into these three men of God, one million dollars. Then one of them had close to $700,000. One was $150,000. And the other one in Naira, close to 70 million. That's how we shared it, 2015. It was one of those seeds that produced that testimony. So when you hear testimonies, find out the story. Now the seed we sowed cannot match the harvest. The insurance of that property, not the property, the insurance is seven million dollars. Insurance, not the property. A. Then what are the property? Because insurance cannot be higher than the property. If we to insure the property seven million, the property must be millions. Yeah. And a seed of less than 700,000 provoke it. See the harvest and the seed. So whatever you sow, when God multiplies it, he multiplies it in a way that even you will be flabbergasted. I have a brother when he wants to speak English. That's how he speaks. He says, you are flabbergasted. <laughs> My elder brother, biological elder brother. What did they give me? Kai, I'm flabbergasted. I said, I said bros, <laughs> this, is your, this is your English now. So, when God blesses you, you'll be what? You just say, wow. Did, 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 did I mention prayer here? Did I mention prayer here? Did we pray, say prayer here? And all these people, I, I, I call their names, who God bless. Did anybody pray? Did Abraham pray? Eh? Did God pray? Did Noah pray? Did, me, did I pray? So stop your prayer point. Rise your feet. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Just make a sacrificial word. Now I'm giving a point of contact. But I was a point of contact. So into this cathedral and watch your own life. He didn't ask me. Oh, but there has to be something you tap into. Pastor. Don't say the people who have can't they give to you. I would, no, you give to the higher vessel, then the grace will provoke to you. Is that clear, sir? Hmm? Now listen, I'll tell you something that will shock you. <laughs> Before I asked people to give for glory and sacrifice, I gave and the church, our church also gave a nine figures to another church. Of their own sacrifice. A church had sacrificed they took. And that's what I want. So I took from the church nine figures and sold before the sacrifice was given that same week. 
I said, well, anything I want to happen. So I sold it without meeting anybody to pray. I sold nine figures from the church into another church. I don't want to start talking. Nine figures. Then I gave my own separate. So the church will prosper, will prosper. And as at now, I can't tell you. The harvest, even now, even if I tell you, put your hands on your head. I know this thing, though. <laughs> I can take prosperity without note for one week. That's no note. I don't close my eyes. Genesis chapter 8. Turn to verse 20. I can teach it without notebook. You know why? You know why you are not giving? You have not suffered poverty. <laughs> if you suffer poverty, nobody will tell you. If I don't beg you, you say, oh boy, I will give up. <laughs> I tasted poverty. I suffered it, so I know what I'm talking about. They won't pass you to give. You will give. What did he say? Give. You go say, well, how much? I won't give. Tell me. I know what I went through. Do you know I'm arrogant like this? When you have wealth, you're arrogant. There are three M's. Tomorrow, leaders out there, three M's. When the pastor command those three M's, you break all, multitude, money. Your mouth will be sharp. That's why Jesus was arrogant. He said, You Pharisees, what to you? He had money. He had miracles. He had multitude. to do. He said, what are you, Pharisees? Am I looking for your money? Stupid. I have money. A thief is with me. <laughs> I'm not a poor man. What are you? you can... do we... Somebody told me and he said, sir, the way you are told the politicians is because you have money. I will look at politicians and say, hey, come out of money. You, you know, come out of money. In their face. You can't say that if you are broke. <laughs> this is the last day you go through hardship. <laughs> I repeat, today be the last day you go through hardship. Before I prophesy to you, <laughs> you know, Saul found himself in the midst of prophets, touched the key, and he began to prophesy. There are men who carry grace. So. The key to kingdom wealth, the generation before me is in the hands of Eripo. The key to kingdom wealth in my generation is in my hands. With all humility before God. Anywhere in the world. I don't preach prosperity. I, I, I smell it. I enter somewhere that place prospers. There's a difference between preaching and you carrying it. I'm a carrier. I don't preach prosperity. Even if I come back and I say God bless you, you'll be blessed. Now, I'm going to pray for you. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, what do you have me to give? Don't tell any man to change my story. He will tell you. He will do what? What do you have me to do to change my story for life? For what? What do you have me to do for a change of story? Lift your right hand. He will talk to you. How you know it's a sacrifice? See how you know it's a sacrifice? It was something you value. Something what? It's something you value. If a sacrifice, you do like the first. Say, ah! That's, that's the thing that will bring out of poverty for life. So Holy Spirit, tell me what I need to do to bring me out of where I am to where I ought to be. In the name, speak to me, I will hear you. In Jesus' mighty name. It may not be immediate. Even while you're going, it will talk to you. But whatever it tells you to do, do it. You will never be the same. How can I pray for you? Can you sing? I need thee every hour Most gracious Lord No tender voice like thine Lift your voice and worship Can peace
look at the richest churches in the world like Nigeria. How come Nigeria is stamped to be a poor nation? Redeem, live in faith, Christ's embassy, deeper life, name them. Salvation, the richest church, the biggest churches are all in Nigeria. Richer than any other place in the world. How come? Something must be there. The gospel is around this place. The wealthiest churches today on earth are all in Nigeria. There must be something Nigeria has to the world. When you go through most of foreign nations, they don't give. Somebody will give and collect it back as tax. He has given nothing. Because if I pay tight and I say write it off, then I've given nothing. They think it's a principle. I gave to God and I collect it back. So what have I given? Are you going to say now? Nigeria knows giving all. The highest giving churches are in Nigeria. If you watch, that's why they can't understand that Nigeria is prospering. But I came to announce to you, today will be the last day you go through hardship. Amen. Believe the Lord your God shall be established. Believe me because he sent me. I'm speaking over your life. You have made up your mind to be a giver, to make sacrifice. As you lay that seed, I speak over you. The yoke of hardship is broken. Amen. Whatever grace I came here with, in the name of Jesus, all over the globe, you are connected to this voice I'm speaking from. I decree this be the last day you go through hardship. Amen. Ideas withdraw from heaven. Amen. To make you a kingdom giant. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your generation. Beginning with you. Will never taste poverty. Amen. If there be anyone suffering from any plague. As you obey this covenant principle. I command that plague to drop. Amen. Anyone threatened with dead. Dead will lose his grip. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you saw into that cathedral, whatever you are looking for, you have it in essence. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I command your story to turn. Amen. And your life to turn. Amen. To those who came sick, I pronounce you healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it is well with you. Amen. It is well with you. It is well with you. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. A man must be born again. Carry your bags and Bibles. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The greatest sacrifice was made for you to be born again. He gave his only begotten so that whosoever believes in him shall not pray but have everlasting life. All those who say Jesus I want to give my life to you. Open the doors. From the overflow, all the centers, the viewing centers, come to the front where you are. If you are at the headquarters, find your way here and give your life to Jesus. That's the greatest miracle. It's not your money first, your life first. But if you're in any of the overflows, flow to the front. If you're in any satellite churches, walk to the front of the altar of the church. But for those of you at the headquarters, come to the front and give your life to Jesus. Find your way to the front and be born again. Open the doors for them. Please let them come in. Come this way and give your life to Jesus. That's the greatest miracle. Find your way. Come and give your life to Jesus. Find your way to the front and be born again. Surrender. Keep coming, keep coming and give your life to Jesus. To him I freely give. I will ever, I will ever Listen. Hold it. Hold it, hold it. While I'm making altar call, nobody goes. I'll tell you a story that will shock you. When I'm making altar call, nobody leaves. I went for a program in Oweri for a crusade. A boy shared a testimony that humbled all of us. In 2018, so I came for a crusade. And I was preaching. And as I was preaching, I said, nobody leaves. I said, nobody should leave this meeting. He said, it was about going. Just at the point, I said, nobody leaves this dude. 
And I said, nobody leaves. I'll pray for you. And this boy said, after the meeting, it rained. So where he was going, he walked inside water to his house. 2018. Inside water. That will tell you the kind of environment. By 2019, he, he bought six cars. Nobody leaves. The end of the meeting, what I will pray for you before I drop the microphone, will turn your life forever. Amen. Keep coming. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to him. Keep singing. On to Jesus. Jesus I Keep coming. Jesus loves you. Keep coming. Keep coming. He loves you. My friend. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. We love Jesus loves you. Keep coming. He loves you. If you're standing or sitting anywhere and a voice says to you, join these people. Another voice says to you, why do you need to join them? You've been going to church all your life. The voice that said to you, join them with the voice of God. You don't have voice, the voice of the devil. If you have some struggle, please come and join them all over to the same way you are. Sing, I surrender, I surrender all one more time. And I surrender. Everyone in front and all churches, if you're coming, come quickly. More persons are coming. There's joy in heaven over his soul. More are coming. Keep coming. Give us a big hand for the harvest of souls. Glory to God as the greatest of all miracles. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. If I go anywhere, this one gives me joy more than anything else. Keep, keep coming. Keep coming. There's joy in heaven over his soul. Keep coming. He loves you. There's joy in heaven. Keep clapping. They keep coming. Keep clapping. They keep coming. Keep clapping. They keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Jesus loves you. He loves to keep clapping as they keep coming. Keep clapping. We wait for them and they keep coming. Everyone in front and all sinners, say after me, Lord Jesus. I have come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from dead to save me right now. With my mouth, I declare you my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for your precious sons and daughters all over the world. Write their names in the book of life and set them free. In Jesus' mighty name. Open your eyes. Who is attending to them? Look at somebody there whose hand is waved. Follow that sister. Follow her. Give us a big hand. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong Please, I want to be attentive at this moment. I'm going to pray for you for one or two minutes. Follow me strictly. I was meditating when I was making the altar call. And he said, don't bother about praying. Just say it as I want it. Haggai 2.8 says, the gold, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. Who owns the silver and gold? Who owns the money? The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Say it, not said. It means you're still speaking. Who owns it? Don't say God. Say my father. If you say so to person, say my father. my father. Say it one more time. Who owns it? Now, if it's your father who owns it, will he give? Now, let me, I want to pray for you. And please be very attentive. If your father is the owner and you are the father and your children say we are hungry, will you give to your neighbor's children before your children? No. 
I'm going to command things to happen. Please be very sensitive. If your father is the owner, there's no way a child will come to say, Daddy, Mommy, I'm hungry. And then you give food to your neighbor's children before your children. Your children must take first. So sinners can't hold it. I mean, I'm fluent with me. So sinners can't hold it. It should be in your hands. Moses went. I was not meditating. He said, talk. I will just confirm it. Moses went to a Pharaoh and said, let my people go. That was not his language. That was the language of God. But he needed a man to speak it. Moses said, Pharaoh, you've been holding these people. Let them go. Let, if you don't let them